All right, we have Sam Jafrida today. Sam is an actual aerospace engineer, which is terrifying, and a bowyer. You combine those two things together and you get yourself a very, very, very technical conversation. Um, <clears throat> I'm bringing on subject matter experts that I leverage um, all the time. Sam is certainly one of them. I call Sam anytime I need to understand the physics of archery. I consider him a true, genuine subject matter expert. He understands physics and how it plays into the to the sport. But Sam, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. You oh, are you the bowyer. You think? Thanks for having me. Yep, you're the bowyer for Backwoods Composites and the owner. You make risers and limbs now. You have two different limbs, if I'm not yep. mistaken. And um, yep. this is this is going to be primarily about the riser because there's so there's so much to talk about. We we need to split it really. So we're going to isolate today's discussion to the physics of the riser. We will later be getting into Sam's limbs and <clears throat> and just limbs in general. And Sam can take you down the rabbit hole. So uh, we'll see We'll see if we can manage this conversation and uh, not get too weird and uh, make sure it's digestible for people. Uh, but Sam, uh, I appreciate you coming on. It takes a lot of guts to come on and, and literally just open up about your design and bowyers that are willing to do it are adding a lot of value in my mind because it's going to help May, hopefully you'll sell some risers, but more importantly, uh, for the community, people can assess equipment without having to purchase it. And I think that'll add quite a bit of value. Yep. Um, what I really had a passion for in, in college was uh, strength of materials and structural analysis. So I, I got into, so what I do on a, on a daily basis is I size airframe structures, uh, ranging from composites to metals. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a fun, fun career. I love what I do in aerospace. Usually when I look to building a bow, um, I'm looking to like, I looked at four parameters, uh, suitability, durability, sound, and speed. Um, I think those are the four governing factors of a really well, uh, thought out bow. All right. Well, let's, let's go into shootability, durability, sound, and speed. And honestly, uh, if you can explain to us, and again, this should be a dual benefit because I know you've got a riser that you should be proud of and you should want to talk about. I want you to talk about your riser and and, and give us the how physics play into this design. But I, yeah. And I want people to get to know you as a bowyer because you're a great person. But I also want them to get a, another freebie benefit and that when they're done with this interview, they can go on Three Rivers website or you know wherever they order bows and they can look at a design and say, that looks like it's going to be forgiving, forgiving, according to what Sam said. So let's let's dive into the shootability aspect of physics in into traditional archery. So applied physics into the bow design. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So you know, like I said before, the risers are all my bow designs. You have these four design parameters: shootability, durability, speed, and sound. Uh, the risers you're really going to hit. Um, shootability, which is the biggest portion, because that's the one that the, the archer feels connected with. He touches that bow, he holds it, he moves it around, he sh you know, he does what he want, what, 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 wants with it. Um, and then uh, uh, the speed is, is, I would say, the next aspect to, to, to risers. You might not, some people might not think it, oh, well, it's a 19 inch riser, they all should shoot the same. No, they right. don't. There are differences in speeds with risers. And that's why on my speed charts online, I have a range. I don't just say, you know, you're going to hit this, you know, feet, you know, feet per second with this arrow weight, you know, because there, there is a range. And I, and I try to accomplish that by taking two different risers from the far end of the spectrum and saying, this is, this is the range I, 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 I believe you should be at. Um, so that's for speed. And then there is a little bit on, on durability. Um, and that, that plays a good role in with just quality. Um, a lot of that is just is just quality of, 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 of the risers and uh, and okay so so to start off we'll just go off on um, on the feel of the let's, bow and let's go with the let's go with so, shootability and and if I had to like pin you down and say all right because shootability people have told me when I was early with Trad Lab that I wouldn't be able to measure or quantify shootability you actually can quantify shootability. And the biggest message I really want people, and you, you've actually taught me this, Sam. So um, I want people to kind of get the lesson on how can you actually measure shootability? And I don't mean 300 rounds. That's obviously a great measure of how I can shoot. But how could I, how could I take measurements on these different designs and say, man, this one's going to be more shootable than this one? 
what what are things that I can do to to compare and and measure or quantify shootability? All right. So yeah, the, 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 there's two there's there's two big uh, big aspects with uh, with shootability. Uh, one is uh, the mass of the riser, and when I talk about mass, it's not always just a big hunk of metal that just weighs heavy and it's hard nice. to hard to move, right? right. So um, what I, what I'm well, I had to grab on the riser here, make sure I can hold it because I like I like holding this thing in my hand. <laughs> uh, that, yeah. So so uh, yeah, it's, it's mass, but it's not only just mass. Um, uh, in, in general, just just this just make it heavy, you know. Um, uh, it's mass. I believe where you put the mass at really matters. Uh, and then, and, and then the other thing with shootability is going to be what I, or, or I, you know, it's going to be, uh, the limb, the limb angle in reference to, uh, your riser, uh, your, your limbs that you, you have, right? All limbs are made different. So some limbs, uh, I know some guys don't like to say this about the risers, but some limbs do better on other risers than some risers just because this limb pad angle is not consistent through all ILF bows. They're, they're majority, I mean, uh, some of them kind of, they kind of get in the same range, but they, but they do vary and a degree or two matters. Okay. With, with, especially when you're talking big hooker, big, big hooker, <laughs> big hook limbs. Um, they, it, 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 that, 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 that angle is a big deal. And it's same thing with uh, longbow limbs, same deal. This angle is, is critical. Um, I find that out a lot uh, with my longbow development, which is kind of on, on, on the back burner, but I did learn a lot about this angle really mattering a lot uh, with the uh, with the longbow limbs. Um, All right, so real then, fast, uh, let's uh, explain because you're making you're making kind of vague statements. So let's let's just nail it down because there's not a lot of variation. There's WF25 limb pad angles, which kind of have uh, more preload. That's in the WF25, seven, uh, mm -hmm. 19, and 27. They relax them a little bit on the 21 and the 29. You have um, Hoyt geometry, which I have here, where they everyone's pretty familiar. That's kind of the standard, the old Hoyt geometry, right? And then you have in your design something that's actually in between both. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, my mine is in, in between both. I would say, uh, like you just said, the, the, on the WF and, and then the Hoyts, definitely right. in, so, in, in, in between both. So. Perfect. So. That helps people because I think people are really familiar with, you know, WF preload and they're certainly familiar mm -hmm. with like a GMX or a, that's an old GM, of course. So you're yeah. right between both of those. So does that mean that you would add um, an additional pound? Like for a WF, I add two pounds over what I would normally add on a limb. Would I add a pound to this if I was using traditional limbs like Earl Hoyt Jr. contoured or, do you know? Yeah, no. So, so with that. Uh, there, so no, it's not a, it's not a, a, a clear number. I mean, I can tell you the difference between the, uh, uh, on the WF and then a more of a Hoyt design, what the poundage is and that, but it would be like somewhere, uh, like you just said in between the, the, but the issue is that's what the limb pocket does for you. But what it, you also have, you know, under, you know, got to understand is the I deflex. Gotcha. Yeah, I got and you. And I have a lot of deflex. So there's there's a lot of parameters in judging how much how much poundage you're gonna get in 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 a bow with a set of limbs. There's a lot to deal with. It's the limb pocket angle and and the deflex, which is the, you know the deflex is the next sort of shootability uh, aspect, I would say. But uh, let's get uh, into there's, it. There's a let's lot into it. There's a lot to risers. So all right. So first, first we we start off with what I talked about was the mass. Mass moment of inertia, so um, it is a, is an actual physical concept. I don't know, kind of, is that an actual uh, um, physical equation for it? Um, you can calculate it. It's it's basically uh, it's the rotational inertia. So how, how you know how how hard is something to rotate, right? Right. So rises like this. You got you got you know three axes of rotation. You know you got <laughs> this one here, okay, and you got the back and forth, and you got this one. So, and you can imagine like, oh, uh, what's shown here on the slides, um, reason why you don't want a big hunk of metal, that's, that's like on, we got the big M there, 
big amp, big, big hunk of metal in this, you know, located in the center of the riser, right? You're going to be able to rotate that hunk of metal really easily. Okay. Right. Now, if you take that same amount of mass, same amount of mass you weigh here, say it's three pounds, but you distribute it more towards, towards the end of, end of the riser, right? That's going to mm -hmm. give you a whole lot more and a weight and, you know, move that mass away from the, from the center, uh, uh, on the center of gravity of a bow. And, uh, and that was, helps you out resisting any kind of uh, uh, a bad, bad form, bad moving, um, you, know, a, a, you know, even after you shoot the bow, right? Yeah, sometimes these bows wanna go forward, right? Or go backwards after you shoot them. Some that are, when they're well balanced, uh, they, um, uh, um, they say, oh, uh, upright you know so um resisting any of this uh movement you know during your shot after your shot or anything is mass moment inertia helps out tremendously and the reason why it helps out is because you got the in the equation the r value is squared so that's why moving the mass actually is more beneficial more more has more benefits than um just ha adding more mass So it's that R square value in the equation that actually what, what gives you um, the more moment of inertia, which is helps resist rotation of the riser. And, uh, and that's where, that's why, I, you know, the uh, mass moment inertia, I really think uh, really plays into um, accuracy so, and which is directly related to, to um, uh, uh, of the shootability and forgiveness. So let's let's give some practical examples so we don't glaze people's eyes over. So let me just walk through a few. Every archer performed. I was I was thinking about this actually today to try to come up with more practical examples. Every archer performs uh, a moment of inertia test when we hold a wood arrow up and spin it, or really any arrow, and we spin it. You're spinning that arrow, and if that arrow spins really well, it's a straight arrow, right? If the yeah. arrow if the arrow's bent or in, like we're saying, it has deflex, for example, and you spin it, it wobbles and it resists that spin. That makes for a really bad arrow, right? Because mm -hmm. it's the, the, the moment of inertia is, is obviously gonna be higher. For a riser, that's exactly what we want. So Sam gave the example yesterday when we were talking, he took his riser and he just threw it in the air and flipped it and caught it. A riser like this ASL, which I love ASLs. I have a ton of them. I shoot them daily and I love them, but they're more difficult to shoot mainly because of this physics principle. This thing has the weight right in the center and um, you, you can actually grab your bow at home, flip it in your hand and, and feel how easy that is to shoot. And it, this, this applies to wood bows just like it does metal bows. You look at this design, oh, yeah. this, this design is going to be, I'm not even going to do it because I'm not going to scratch up my KB, but this design is going to be very hard to flip and, and be stable, right? So it, that tells me that it's going to resist torque and it's going to be a more yeah. forgiving design. So whenever you hear us talk about deflex, I think the tightrope walker is a great example, but I think the better example is the one you gave yesterday where you just hold your bow out at home and flip it in your hand or use common sense now and look at it and say, would that be harder to flip than, than a design like this? And that really helps you understand if a bow is going to be torquey or not. And some bows are a lot more torquey by design than others. Mm -hmm. And you just have to have, you know, better form if you want to shoot them well. But that's, oh, yeah. that's in a nutshell, I guess, a moment of inertia and how it applies to archery. And, and it's, it goes back. This isn't a new concept. This is a one of the first Hoyt metal risers. This is 1971. And in 1971, they had these things on them. Well, and they had a little bit of deflex here, right? And you yep. obviously this is going to be harder to to torque on either axis, right? So getting that weight forward out that we're used to seeing from CD archery, it's been around a while. I'm not saying CD archery copied them. I'm saying CD archery was intelligent and they applied physics to their design and uh, people have been doing that for a long time and i i think it makes when you understand the basic concepts you can glance on a website at a bow and go that'll shoot or that won't shoot for the most part 
Wouldn't you agree, Sam, just off of physical inspection or visual inspection? Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's kind of funny. That's, that's kind of what you actually said before you even had my riser. Uh, I think it looks, looks like it shoots good. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, you know, some of these things that, you know, I'm going to help uh, point out and, 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 and Cody does his work, too, is, is yeah, I hope point out, you know, what what you kind of want to look for in a riser for shootability. Um, and, and and there's a lot of things is personal for a bow too. So um, so you gotta throw throw that in there too. You know, not everybody's gonna love my riser. I mean, there's a lot of good risers out there. Uh, it's yeah, really just what, 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 what works best for for you and how and, and how you feel it. Uh, that's the biggest thing is feeling. If it feels good to shoot, it works great. It's like you know, the, the other day I just got done building. Uh, one of my one piece bows for this year for hunting. Uh, I, I wanted a, wanted a newer one, so I put more more deflex in it. Um, so I wanted it for this year to shoot, and um, and but you know I've been shooting it for about a month and a half now, and um, I went from shooting my hit nineteen riser to this, and oh man, I I, I sucked like <laughs> shooting horribly, you know, and it has to do with the riser design. You know, it's not the same riser design. So just this last week, I finally slapped on my quiver and with all my heavy arrows and, and boom, shot better. Um, right. So that, like you said, the, the quiver, you know, you got all these arrows down here, right? Well, look how far away that is from right. your, your center of gravity, right? That helps right. add this rotational moment of inertia, you know? So right. um, there's a lot of, you know, there, 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 there's reasons for designs for everything. This what this this bow here is my hunting bow. Uh, so, you know, uh, last year I really, <laughs> the heavier bows, um, I hunted last year with my prototype <laughs> hit 19. So that one was a, a lot more bulkier, uh, heavier in mass. So this year I'm like, well, I kind of want to go back to hunting with a one piece bow. Plus I wanted to try out the higher, the, the higher deflex this year with it. but. Uh, yes, you know, so it was risers are just a lot with them to to uh, to personalize on um, what your goal is. I mean, I have four design goals, right? But what are your archery goals? What what is your what is your goal with this bow? And that that's how that's how you should go go look at a bow when you go buy it. What do you want out of it? We've talked about center of mass. We've talked about deflex and how to test that at home. The next thing that comes up a lot, people say, oh, the balance of the bow is great or the feel of the bow and they bring up balance a lot and they try to make it kind of an art and really balance is a science as well. Can you walk us through um, the application of physics and finding the balance of a bow? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's kind of funny what I, what I see too, you know, this is, this is what I got into building bows and I come from the, from the physics and engineering aspects, uh, you know, going to college, knowing what terms are and things. And um, with, uh, when I got into bows, there's so much terms people just throw out and say, oh, it's, you know, it's, uh, for example, this, for this example, oh, it's a, it's a well-balanced bow. It feels great. Well, you know, there, you know, there's a, there's a difference between a balanced bow and a bow that has high rotational moment of inertia. Okay, high, high high mass moment of inertia. So there's a there's a complete difference between that. And I just want to uh, clarify what I what I call a balance of a bow would be like on a balance beam. And uh, and for this example, you want you know a lot of these guys they want their bows to be when they're shooting it to be ex you know to hold vertically upright. They call that balanced. Okay, or or or. or you know, some guys, I've, the reason why I go into, into these terms, because some guys, the bow is not balanced. It does rock behind you. And they'll say, oh, it's a well-balanced bow. Like, I've been told that my riser is a well-balanced bow, bow. And I tell them, no, it's it's not. Okay. It, right. it rocks back. In, in, in terms of balanced bow, if you want to, you, you want it to be just 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 like, like that. If you want a, a balanced, a vertically balanced bow. That's what I would call it, a vertically balanced yeah, bow. So because like, look, look at it. This bow, this bow is not going to rock uh, uh, this way or that way. So that would be another balance, right? You know, uh, it's all about balancing on 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 a on, on, on a beam. So it's like, you know, if you hold your bow and it constantly wants to do this, right? That's out of balance. You know, if it, or unless you unless you shoot can't like I do. So right, <laughs> but if 
you know, if this bow here, you know, it rocks back, it's at, it's, it, it's out of balance. So it doesn't mean it has low mass mo moment inertia because this thing is very hard right. to rotate. So right. explain, that's what I'm trying um, to get you to explain though. So there, there is a fundamental difference between balance and, mo and high moment of inertia. So if you see these pictures here, what, I, what I've done with the design was I've made sure that you can add bare bow weights to it to uh, uh, get it to work, to bring that mass to rotate the bow back to, back to balance. And, and then, you know, I removed enough material on the back side so that the, the, the 12 centimeter ring fits around it. Um, and, and how that weight works, the science behind it is you have, you have this, this, this center, center of mass point, right? And if the center of mass is, is, is more uh, uh, back here, you know, uh, but then when you hold, hold your riser forward, it's going to want to rock back because that center of mass is pointing on the back side of where you're holding it from. So what you got to do is you got to add mass on the front to counteract that. So now you basically are moving your center of mass to where you're holding the bow. So is it, does, is it that that fair to actually say, moves your center of mass? Is it fair to say that you want your pivot point and your center of mass as close together as you possibly can get them? Uh, so yes, you know, I, I would believe that that's where you want it. That's where you're going to be holding the bow for the most part, right? So you add, you add this weight in and that, that center of mass, when you add the weight, uh, it's moving it, uh, forward and, 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 and down as well. So, uh, when you add the weights on, on, on the bottom and what's helping you out when you move it down, it helps any kind of pendulum effect as well. So it helps uh, move that weight down and you get the pendulum to hold, hold down on, on the bottom. It increases that, that you know, that mass moment of, 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 of inertia. How can you help people find their center of mass on their riser? I mean, is it is there a practical way for them to do it? No, there's no practical way for them to do it. I mean, only, I mean, yes. Sorry. Okay, if you're gonna you want to hold in, hold it a little bit and get it. See, that's where this riser and stock comes with mass moment inertia. I'm pinching it right on the back side of it, so I'm I'm about a good a good you know three eighths three eighths to yeah three eighths of an inch away from where the, the throat of the grip is. So, and if you take some of if I hold it here right in the middle, it's going to ro rotate back on you. Hold it out gotcha. here on the end, it's not. So that's, so that's how you can, that's how you can uh, find it physically to just, just grabbing the bow. Um, but you know, it's, it's uh, doing that is, is okay, it's nice, but you really just want to grab the bow and shoot it. And if it feels nice, you know, that's the big goal is shooting it and making it feeling nice, you know, and, you know, if you need to have it, add weight on, you do it. So it stays vertically up, uh, upright, you know, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a canter, right? I shoot my bow at a cant. So I don't want the bow rocking back to where, where, where it's vertically balanced at, right? I want to keep the bow here, you know, so there's, so there's little, uh, uh, tips and tricks on, Weight, weight distribution to get it so it so it, it, it hangs it hangs like this. I believe all bows should have a pendulum effect. No matter how they're designed, they should always be slightly bottom heavy. That center of of mass should be below the point on where you're where you're holding the bow at. So it should have it should be heavier on the bottom than it is it is on the top. So you're saying you think the center of mass should be lower than where you hold it? Oh yeah, yeah. Definitely. I think it definitely should be slight, slightly lower. So, so you should always we, have a little more mass on that? the bottom of your riser than, than okay. on the top. Okay. That's, that's what I'm looking for. So people should look yeah. at the riser and say, okay, it's heavier down here than it is up here. And you leave yours yeah. balanced like this to add that weight and create uh, equilibrium, correct? Yes. Right. Because so Just to be clear, so, because you know, I, if, you, if you hold Sam's riser, it's going to tilt like this. And it does feel weird at first because most of our risers don't do that he's designed it so that when you do add the weight it straightens it out yeah. with, well with i, I believe Hoyt's, yeah the Hoyt, Hoyt buffalo does it um there's a i think uh uh i can name some other ones but yeah I, I don't i think just i think really it's 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 wf does not 
and and the Tempest. Uh, I don't know. You might you might know more risers. I don't have a huge selection of risers. I try not to actually have anybody's risers uh, or anybody's products. Um, uh, I know I have a few, but but it's a very small amount. Um, so you probably know more about uh, the riser, you know, coming back coming back on you or not, or forward on on, on, on a person without adding the weights. That's so okay. Can, yeah. yeah. So it's just from your perspective and applied physics. We want more weight on the bottom than because as a barebow archer, we all know that we've been putting weights down here for a long time, so we can get that pendulum effect. It's just great to hear why, why, why it's been a benefit for us. And you're just saying it, it mm -hmm. benefits from a center of mass perspective, and it creates more balance, if you will, and stability in the shot. Is it harder oh, yeah. to torque so, in that manner? Yeah. So, all right. So you again, what you want, you know, by adding the mass on the bottom, right? It again helps out with that whole, as you can see in this picture, uh, R, which is the distance from this chunk of mass to the to the to the center of mass, that helps it create that rotational moment of inertia more, right? That mass move, mass moment of inertia is now is now higher because you know the the the, 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 the weight is further away from from the from the, from the center of mass point. So right. that's one thing I want to point out about the design too is what. what what you want to kind of look for is you want to look for someone that uh, has a design where I believe that you they pushed that that location of the bearable weights much forward. Mine's all the way uh, in flush with the front of my riser, so that was so I can have that more mass moment of inertia. I mean that was the whole you know design around this bow was mass mass moment of inertia. So I moved this all all more more in front of the or more 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 forward. Um, that so that when you add this weight on, it has more of an effect of, of if you had it just, you know, typically a lot of them are like right or right here at the bottom of right. the grip, right? That's, and, that's inside of the riser. That's, that's not too far away from, 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 from your center of mass. And I love, I love old designs like 1971 Hoyt and they have these little weights moved way out from the riser. So, I mean, they understood physics at that time, and they were designing these to, to, to improve and increase the moment of inertia with these little odd-looking stabilizers they had mm -hmm. back in the day. But it's the exact same effect, right? And it's, it's just really cool. Um, it's, it's odd that we lose this because this is 1971, right? And then, you know, you go through phases where you lose physics for marketing, but it's good to see physics come back. It, it really is. Yeah, so yeah, you, you know, it's it's really cool too. I, I like the older. Cause I'm a big one piece bow fan guy. You know, the older one piece bows. You know, a lot of them had where they where they try to add more more weight, weight. You know, away from away from away from the throat. You know, and they had concepts of moving it. You know, more more forward as well. Yeah. Um, there's there's a lot of uh, uh, aspects to, to to those kinds of designs think, where you, you want know, that. I said this earlier. I mean, you can see this is a Ken Beck bow. You can see Ken Beck understood physics in his design. You you can look at your design and his design and see they're not identical. I'm not trying to say, but I'm saying two engineers designed this based on the same uh, applied physics. And I think that's really, really cool that you can see that in, you know, the wood bows and then, you know, the latest uh, from you is it's really neat in my mind. But to be able to see moment of inertia in design, that deflex and placing the weight to your point as far away as you possibly can, you're limited with a, mm -hmm. you're limited with a, I think Bear had a really cool one. I can't remember the name of it. Normally I would, but they, they flared that wood way out on the ends and the front. So they knew what they were doing. And yeah. um, I can, I can look at a design and for the most part and say, oh man, that's going to be pretty stable. So yeah, it's really see, cool I, I to, to know why. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, mass moment of inertia is is a pretty uh, big concept I I believe in, and I think I think you know you're right. It might have been lost, but it's, it's it's still there. Like you know, you know these these these, these target guys for Olympics, they had those big sticks with the mass on the end of them. I mean that that is the, the concept of mass moment of inertia. I mean that, that's clearly yeah. the picture I showed before. You know, a long a long stick with masses on on on, on, on the end of it. He can get the same effect. You get the same effect if you just had all that, you know, tons of mass. You know, it ended up being more because you get the R square value in there. But you have a tons of mass 
slap right there on the front of the riser. You have to have a huge bulk of steel to get that same mo mo moment of inertia. I mean, maybe not steel. I don't do good with head math and density. But, I understand. But you have to, you, you understand. You have to get a lot of mass to get that same mass moment of inertia. So that's where the long the long sticks get in. Now the problem with bare bow is you know or you, know, you can't really put on a lot of weight. So you really have to try to optimize optimize it, and you do it with with your design and that's one of the things i, I you know i i, I figured I was, I was trying to figure out how to get more mass mo moment of inertia in my in my in my riser and that's where i that's where i thought of well you know how about i try a uh uh the lighten up the window right okay. um just straight up mass helps stabilize the bow in lateral direction i don't even right. think i kind of i've talked about that but about that one yet um now center of mass is and where it's located at based on how you're holding the bow is balance. That's having the bow balanced like on a balance beam or a, a teeter-totter, right? Gotcha, um, that's a great, that's that's a great that summary. That's where that comes into play. That's a great summary. And you've designed your bow to balance with the bottom kicking out because you know adding weight to the bottom makes it shoot better. Having more weight on the bottom than the top makes it shoot better with that pendulum effect. So you biased it like this, we add weight, and now we have a balanced riser. Yeah, exactly. And there's also also aspects too is with is with this kind of riser too. I was I designed it so you can uh, uh, have more of a bolt-on type of riser, um, you know, a bolt-on type of quiver. Um, and you can actually put those quivers more forward, which helps, you know, with the weight more forward, it's going to help drop or rotate this bow back back to balance. So that makes sense. Having your quiver out more forward of your bow helps helps do that and that's why i like the i like the tight spot that's, that's what i use for this for this riser so i can actually put that put that quiver out in the front of my front of my bow and it all comes down with with with, 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 with mass too because you have that quiver on you have your arrows it's all heavy um so i wanted to make sure i can put on that quiver on the forward not have to have the weight on the bottom and it will be balanced out so that you know and not having too heavy of a riser i didn't want to I don't want a big, heavy, bulky riser. I wanted something that 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 feels good in the hand, and you can hike a lot, um, um, lots of miles with it. Which is, you know, the the the, the riser so when you compare yeah, it to some of the other really it's a, heavy risers. It's a, it's a hefty 19. I would say that, but it's not a, it's not it's not like super duper heavy, right? But it's it's not a lightweight by any means. But it does have the weight. You can definitely, mm -hmm. for me, even just doing that, it's crazy. You can feel that it resists the rotation. So it's um it's gonna be interesting. All right, let's get into yeah. um, your torsion and tell me first why torsion is bad. Uh, so, yeah, so you, when you design a, a, a riser, right, you want a really stiff riser. So you don't want the riser twisting on, on, on you while you're shooting. That's just going to have, have, have your limbs, your, li your limbs twist. And you're not going to be, be in plane with your bow. Now, I'm not telling you that all these risers twist. I highly doubt uh, any of them do because they, they design a lot of uh, uh, the add they add material to it to resist the twisting. So, um, but with, what I wanted out of my design is, um, like I said those before, I don't just want to just add add mass to help to help things out. Uh, uh, I want to add uh, strength and stiffness to it um, and try to eliminate the amount of mass I, I put in. So I thought one one place is this is this is this window right? So what I did with the window, I said, well, you know, this, I, I believe this the, the the center of your bow is located around in here, right? You want to try to get all this weight out, right? So I hogged out this pocket, this window here, here as well. So I didn't want to just pull holes in it. I mean, I thought of it, but um, uh, what I wanted to do was I had had, had this I, this idea of a of a C beam uh, because knowing knowing the physics around a uh, a a C beam is that uh, the, the cool thing about a C beam is that the the, the center, the sheer center of a C beam is is on the uh, the uh, outside of the web, right? If you, if you look, if you look, if you look at the C beam, what we call call called in uh, in 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 structures is you have your two caps, which are the thicker parts of the materials, and you have your web, right? right? So 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 for example, you have like an I beam, right? You have these big 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 thick caps, right? Then you have a I web think that's right what's down highlighted in green here in the middle. Yeah, no, no, the highlighting, yeah, the highlighting in green on the upper picture is is, is that seed channel, right? right. So what, what a lot of companies do to 
to uh, um, um, to help resist resist the torque because they, they they add all this extra uh, extra mass in the riser to make to make it stiff. Well, it's not really extra; it's it's added mass and material to make this section stiff because you need this window section stiff to resist torque and induced from your limbs. So if you look at it, the limbs, you know, the force from your limbs comes directly, you know, in the center line of your riser. That's the load path, right? So the center line of the load path is away from uh, 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 your um, your window, right? Your window material. So if you're going to have a straight rectangular cross section of, of, of your window, if you're going to cut it in half, right? This 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 way, right? And you have a rectangular cross section. The center of shear on a rectangle is directly in the center of geometry. So you can see here on the bottom picture, on the bottom picture, picture there, uh, what I call it, this load path eccentricity. And that limb force comes down and it, and it wants to uh, cause a moment, you know, a, a, a torquing force on, on, on your window because the load, 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 load is coming down, right? It's going to want to cause it to, to um, a, 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 um, the twist on you, right? It's going to just right. mm, like this, right? So, so what I did was I said, well, um, uh, instead of just adding more meat in the window section to resist, resist that, that torsion, um, I made it into a C beam because, you know, a uh, C beam has its shear center on the outside of the web, right? And what I did was I was, you know, I just followed math and, 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 the, and I calculated, you know, based on the geometry where my center, center center is, and I placed it right in line with the center center line of the riser, which is the center line of, of the limb core. So there will be no torsion on your window because you're in direct load path of the, the of, of of the center center of the cross section. So you know, there's no eccentricity really cool. causing it to twist. So it goes right down the center of of, of this riser here. And, uh, yeah, and that's, that's, what, that's, that's what's just beautiful about a, a, a C channel, C, 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 C channel section. Yeah, that's really really cool. And I think I'll show. Let me show this because I, I, again, I love going back to old designs. Here's a because I'm doing this not to say that Sam has copied anybody. I'm doing this to validate what Sam is bringing to the table. Like here's a 1990 Bear Whitetail Hunter II uh, that's been warped, but you can see they've kind of gone after a similar approach and. I love old gear and, and showing that you know we're uh, that we're we're applying <laughs> hard fact truths in design like they're non-negotiable. This is how it should be, and I, I I think it's really cool that you that you've come up with this because actually adding mass to the very middle of the riser would hurt your moment of inertia, right? And you want it yeah. to be light in the middle and heavy on the end. So in an I you can't do that with a wood bow. You hear me saying a wood bow all the time. I need to change cameras. You need, that you need mass in the middle because we can't drill holes in here. And you definitely want the middle to be heavier than the limbs. Mm -hmm. You've got a problem on your hands. But on these on these guys here, adding mass to the center actually makes it more torquey. So what Sam has done, he's shooting for optimal, which is what engineers do, and they can often find it. Anybody can go hard factor one way. It takes a lot of work to find optimal, and I think that's um, Sam's applied physics here ha has us here in that category, and it's really, really, really cool to see that come to the table. And it's not something that I would have thought of at all. It's really, it's really neat to see that. Yeah, that's one that's one thing I try to always do with my designs. Is you know, I really try to make sure that it's it's you know I can explain it, I can show it to you. You know, I can even show you the math. I mean, if you want me to calculate the shear the the the, the shear center of the C section, I can't. It's right in a book. That's what I use. I use this book called Work Stress Stress and Strain Formulas. So it's it's uh uh you know a lot of the stuff I do. There's equations to it. You know you can even you can Google search these these these, these things. You know I you know it, it, uh, I try not to like throw in some weird you know marketing schemes where you just you say oh yeah you want this certain technology that's going to be great for your for your bow and you're you're going to want to have it. Um, you know I think it, you know. I got into this business um, because um, I make good money at my day job. I just wanted to design something that that right. that, that, uh, uh, that that I first I wanted to have 
right? And then I'm like, well, shoot, I want more people to have have my stuff. So I just started just, you know, I really wanted to just better the bow community, and um, and you know, now it's just grown into into now now I got this business, you know, and everything. So I'm trying to, um, um, you know, scale now you got up, problems. You know, like, <laughs> now you got problems on your hands. Now I got, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, I got problems. It's, it's, I can't, you know, it's hard for me to find more time. I have. I want to do a 15 inch riser. I want to do a 21. I want to do a 23. You know, uh, 25, 26, 27. I don't know. <laughs> Just yeah. keep going up, right? But, but it's you know, it's hard to find time to do the CAD work. You know, when I'm also sitting here building limbs, doing you know, uh, uh, oh, I was trying to do that that, that long boat R and D. I had to just stop that. I had no really no time. I mean, got like I, I put a, a point on and I you know uh, uh, a stopping point. I wrote down everything I did and I learned and I have the the latest uh, art. R&D stuff just sitting there on the shelf. So I'm just, you know, it's really hard to do. Uh... Now let's go through the freebie stuff that we're getting for people. Uh, people should definitely check out Backwoods Composites. If you want a fact-based design that's an engineered solution, Backwoods Composites has it. Um, Sam is, uh, I've gotten to know Sam pretty well. Sam's taught me a lot about physics because I don't have a, a natural intuition for it. And I only have probably maybe six to nine college credit hours in it. It's not, it's not something I have a core competency in. Um, so Sam helps me a lot and it's, he's very intelligent and he can take you down the rabbit hole with some of the stuff, or you can just get it and know that mathematically it's designed for optimal, which is really cool. What you need to know about Sam is he's a guy working in his garage basically. So if you go with that boutique setup, there's going to be lead times and things of that nature. But um, when we get to the limbs, there's going to be some some reason to have a good relationship with Sam in my mind because he has found some he has found optimal there. But now let's move to the the freebie section where we can recap some of this so people can look at a design and they can determine if it's forgiving or not. What what can we look? Because again, you're a hardworking young person. You want to spend some money and you can only see them online or in catalogs. What do you look for? For a forgiving design, I don't think a lot of it is personal, but there are some some some, some aspects that that uh, help you out. I think mass mullet inertia is one of them. Um, generally, being heavy is another one. I think you want you want a little bit more of a heavier riser than than a light riser. If you're really limited on, um, um, you don't want to have a lot of a lot of weight in a stock size of a riser, right? Because you're going to be adding on a quiver, right? You might want to shop for something like something like mine. It might be a little bit on, on the lighter side stock because you're going to add arrows to it. Um, and then you know, so, uh, you know, the other sh you know, some more sh sh suitability things is um, making sure it's, it's able to become um, uh, or or comes at, as is um, well balanced. Uh, that means when you hold it up, it stays where it wants to stay. Um, now wait now, a minute, Sam. How are they going to see that? How are they going to see that by looking at it without touching it? That's not something you can you can understand through just visual inspection, right? You're not going to be able yeah. to look at a bow, or can you? Yeah. Can so you so so okay. okay so you would you, yeah it? yeah yes you can. So uh, if you have a keen eye for it, I guess. But what you want to be looking for is um um is the uh, if it's an inline riser, you know those are going to be more uh, more balanced um, uh, right down the center, right? Those are going to because that, that that mass of uh, the, the center of gravity, right, is almost more in line with that whole uh, in the whole setup. Now, if you have a bow with a high deflex, right, that's going to come stock with hardly uh, or not hardly with with, with very uh, with, with not as great as a um, uh, uh, a, a, a balance to it. Tell, tell me, okay, what, yes. this is the top from Deflex again. So we have a Deflex riser here. This is a white GMX. This is one of the most popular competitive risers ever made. Uh, yeah. Walk through that Deflex statement again. Yeah. Okay. So, so with the, with the Deflex is it's very hard to get a Deflex riser to have uh, be well balanced uh, with that. You know. With, you know, not, not having it, it do this unless you have the capabilities to add weight to the, the, the bring the bring that forward. And, and the reason, look at it. yeah, well, the reason why I'll, I'll show you why is because you know, if you look at where you're holding the bow, right up here, up here at the, at the throat, right? Look, 
Take imaginary line, right, and draw yourself through it, right? Where is the majority of the mass at? It's behind right. the bow, right? right? So it's going to want to rock, rock back, right, until you add weight to the front of the bow to, uh, to bring it back forward. Now, there are some designs out, out there, you know, that have the, have, 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 the, have the bar in front, right? That adds, so you, have, you, have, you, can have a, you can have a deflex design, right? And if you add the weighted bar on the front, that does the same thing as having the weight down below. The only thing is, it's just more integrated with the bow, having that, having that, having that bar in the front of it. So there, there's 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 nice things about that too. Um, and then now, now the other aspects is, you know, I think when you're choosing a riser is is the uh, the pocket angles. So and that and that's going to be kind of harder for you to see. Um, but you can ask. You can always ask because the boat. The boat yeah, is you can ask. It's yes. Pretty common. Yeah. So you know, for example, you know, the WFs are a little bit, a little bit more. Steve's got more, more, more preload in. A lot of your, I would call standard, but there really is no standard. Um, are, are, are more, are, are more relaxed back. Mine is somewhere uh, in between. Um, so, but it's you know, that's something that 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 you know. It makes it so that the limb timing, you know, uh, this 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 angle here affects a lot on limb timing for heavy hook bows and for long bows. Your standard uh, 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 conventional recurve limbs, not so much. You know, this pocket angle really plays in a, in a lot of timing issues with long bow limbs and with uh, big hook limbs. It's all about you know, with a big hook limb, it's all about timing on when that when that hook unravels, right? And you know, you can imagine, right, that the, the timing of that hook and ravel is going to change based on your, based on this uh, preload on, on, on your limb angle, right? right? So, you know, that 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 location in space where that limb tip starts starts to finally unravel when you're going to have the most mechanical advantage of of the limb, which makes the big hooks smoother. You know, timing that, you know, changing changing your limb pad angle is going to help help that timing. So with with uh, with uh, uh, we want to be able to make sure that you can change these bolts, um, you know, or, or, or turn them out, you know, five or more. That's 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 also a key if you're going to go with a with, with a big hook bow or or, or or I believe with a long bow limb. Uh, with long with, with long bow limbs, you know, this is this moment in space is really what dictates your your noodling, right? And and if you don't have the right limb pad angle for a certain, not all longbow limbs are the same for reflex deflex. So like I said, you have to match up the limbs for the riser. Like I, I, I for example, for, for my for long for longbow designs, I was, you know, when a one one design it would be noodly, the next design it would not, and I, you know, and, and and I would I didn't even change the riser. I kept the riser constant. So, um, you know, uh, so you really want to pair up. Good, you know, the lens you want with the riser, uh, you know, you think works great. And just, you know, you can ask the bowyer, you know, I mean, hopefully they'll be honest with you and say, hey, you know, you probably want this riser if you're going to go with go with these limbs or, you know, these limbs with this riser. So it's, it's uh, you know, you want to make sure that, that they always can play nice. Um, okay. So that helps covered, out shootability. You've covered deflex. You've covered basically the weight distribution and center of mass. And moment of inertia, which kind of visual inspection, you can kind of get there. Um, you've covered limb pad angle, which they could read about. What else could they look at? What about wood bows, Sam? What do you look for in wood bows? So uh, wood, wood bows for uh, very uh, accurate. It's really hard to get them balanced right because you're so limited on the amount of material, you know, you, you can add to, 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 to the wood bow. I mean, even that one, when you hold it. I held up there the um, the Ken Beck one, right? Right. You know yeah, that, that one still rocks back on you, right? And then if you right. were to string that bow up, it would even be worse because now the limbs are right. further back, further right? Back, and right. you can tell Ken, Ken Beck actually tried to push those, you know, put more mass in in in, in, in the front in the front of the bow. A lot of a lot of the winter designs they really try to do that, and and it's and I think it's a really good a, a good idea uh, to try to do to, to try to do your best at that. I think. Um, one of the few, one of the few, it's not wood, but one of the few like traditional bows that does balance is the the wingered here. This is a 21 inch wingered, and he actually adds mm -hmm. weight down here. This thing just hangs. Yeah. And it's got yeah, tons so that, of deflex. 
Yeah, so that's what the pivot, that's what the um, um, uh, the pendulum effect does. So, so let me explain a little bit to you about the, pivot, about the pendulum effect, right? So when you add weight here, okay, and your bow starts to rock back, well, you are changing your your, your center of mass as this is rocking full, uh, rocking back, right? Because now your mass distribution now has has has, has changed. So now. Um, when you rock this forward, you're going to have a greater moment arm now to to resist that that, that uh, on that uh, on that twisting. So it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna help eliminate uh, going so far, right? That's what that's what that's why risers stop, right? Because uh, you're, you're you're changing you're, you're changing where that, that where that, that center of mass is in relation to where you're holding the bow at, right? right. So it, it's it's basically, you know, that, that, that's what that does with that with that bow there. You know, a lot, a lot of the, a lot of the help with that, with that bow, I would believe it makes a really good shooter. Yes, it's one, it's a deflex, and then two, it looks like it's G10, right? Right, super heavy. So that, that's what you want to look for a lot in a one piece bow is making sure that that they, that they do incorporate some way somehow they put more mass into the riser because wood bows are just inherently lightweight and 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 when you go switch switch over from a uh, like what I just experienced with with shooting all all year long with the mile. I, ILF setup, and now I'm trying to go to my hunting setup, which is a, a one-piece bow. It's super light, and I'm just all, all over the place. Uh, so you want to be able to uh, when you when you shop for one, try to look for one that you know has a little bit more mass in uh, in it, and is and is deflex as well. Um, those those things I think is what helps out the the shootability from whole, whole, holding the holding the bow. Like you know, I mean, there's a lot to shootability. Limbs plays. I, I think limb plays not I mean, 75 percent of shootability. Yeah. And the riser is twenty five percent. I think there's a lot to do do with the limbs. The yeah, riser, when we get it, I think uh, when we get into the limbs, out. it'll be a the limbs discussion will be a longer a longer conversation. I'm certain, but um, there's no doubt when you look at that design, it jumps out at you on paper as you know that thing's going to be forgiving. It weighs a lot. It's got the deflex. It's got weight bias to the bottom. We're done talking. Put me on the wait list. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Uh, the deflex weight on the bottom, um, uh, uh, rotational uh, mass moment of inertia, um, and then really just picking one that has the right uh, limb pocket design for your limbs that you're picking. Uh, that that is going to make you have a really good shooter. All right, so let's 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 try this out. Let's, we'll put you to the test here. Little 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 test for the expert, Sam. So here I have a wood bow. It's like, and both of these are great bows. There's nothing wrong with either one of these. These are finely crafted bows, both of them. But just at a glance, if you were to look at these, this is a Dymalux. This is a wood bow. I can't remember the exact type of wood here. Uh, by glancing at this, they're both long bows, by the way. Which one would you assume would be the the more forgiving? Go on the right, or that'd be your left. This there one, you go. This that one. one. So, so tell us why. But yeah, so the uh, are they both the same lengths? Like that riser is a little longer. Uh, this this is actually a sixty eight a sixty eight, and this is a sixty four. Okay. Well, but hopefully. I was going to leave length out. Assuming I, 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 okay, assuming length is the same. Think. Yeah, assuming length is okay. the same. Well, because the, the riser way. looks a little bit bigger and heavier on the, on the one I, the one I picked out. This that one, one feels okay. heavier. Yep, yeah, it's, it's heavier. The the, 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 the the riser does. I'm picking only good bows, so I don't. <laughs> I don't want to pick a shit bow and make it obvious. Making are, the, every, every bow is making it hard on me. Now this is easy. So, out of these two, just at a glance, <laughs> based on based on everything you've said, and both both of these are really really fine bows. Just two completely different designs. Which one's going to be more forgiving? Now we're just talking about riser here. It looks like one's a recurve. Yeah. Just, yeah, one's a recurve, one's a long bow. Okay, so the just the riser talking here on shootability. Just the riser, yeah. Oh yeah, the the, the long bow is the better one. You're full of shit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So yeah, no, no, no yeah, the, definitely the recurve riser. You can see the size in it, and you can see, you know, what, what, you know, I don't know if I, I believe, you know, that, that's based off of Ken Ken, Ken Ken Beck's designs, right? So it has that has that mass further away from the. 
from the yeah. um, from the riser, right? Those big the, the, uh, the spots right where that limb ends at. They're 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 big and fat. They help that 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 that, that rotational uh, moment of inertia. So this one is a traditional, and this one you hold back here like this. So my hand is is closer. On this one, this is the carved grip I was talking about earlier. Both of these are ASLs. Both are, let's just, one's a 66 and one's a 68. Assume they're both the same length. Which one's more forgiving based on what you can see? All right, show me the, the where you would put your grip at. How fat is the bow? Yeah, it's definitely the one that has the carve out. So, and I would- I Tell would, me why. So there's a few things. Uh, one I would say is because it's it's uh, it's it's way opposite of a of a D flex, right? The one the one the one that I did not pick, right? That one has right. more of a forward handle to it. All, you know, you know, you're so uh, you know D flex helps you be able to point better uh, where you're in the shooting. You know, you can you can you're pointing pointing to where you're to where you're wanting so to shoot you're, at. You're right? referring to this dish out here, right? Yeah, it has more. Well, it has more pointability. I believe that one has more pointability than the one than the other design does. And then, and then second, uh, also reason why I asked you to uh, to to look at them, right? I uh, I'm more of a of a, uh, a thinner a thinner grip, uh, not so meaty. I think the meatier ones, the bigger the bigger handles, um, they're they're just not as um, comfort wise and if you don't like the way the bow to me personally i don't if i don't like the way it feels in the hand um i ain't gonna be <clears throat> be shooting it good so i like I, I like a little bit uh uh thinner on the grip um if you hold them up more let, let, let me see some more of it I, I, you're not using physics though you're just using your personal preferences for grips well i can go ask grandma that yeah well, I think that's the, that that is the difference on those two boats because they're going to have the, both the same mass. That is that is the exact right answer. That is the only difference because they have yeah. the exact same mass. They're they're the exact same bow. One's a reverse handle. It's American stick and a northern stick. One's a reverse yeah. handle, and one mm -hmm. is a carved out grip. And the only right answer is is it's going to come down to grip variance because the physics. Are really really close to the same. You're gonna have a slight body oh, yeah. sight difference. Don't get me wrong, all that good yeah. stuff. But so wh which one? Which I, one I'm you should better? Sam, I, this one by far. Uh, this is the one I was telling you about earlier. You and I. Were, I think it's a comfort yeah. thing. Yeah, I can nah, tell you there's a lot. A you know, thing. It's not a comfort thing. It's because I can. Here's the tiller center of the bow right here, and look out. Uh -huh. Look how I can purchase that. Right. I can now get into the the center of mass on this bow is is right here. Right. So I can get into that a little wait, bit wait, more, but and still, yeah. But that's 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 the, actually, that's the vertical center of mass, right? Well, not vertical. That, and my, that's, my, that's, and that's, my pivot. That's the horizontal. My pivot, yeah, that's the horizontal. But yeah. And my pivot points are right here. Mm -hmm. Now, when this was a when this was a a, gen, a straight edge grip, it was harder to shoot. Now. My pivot points here, but I can support the bow somewhat closer to the center of mass, and it doesn't torque on the shot near as much. Mm -hmm. The surface area hasn't changed; it's just the angle. Yeah, well, I think that angle plays a role in in how it feels, and you shoot better if it feels better. Yeah, there, there's no. I maybe I can't differentiate yeah. the two. I, I could totally. Be, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just that was yeah. my perception. I could totally be wrong, but I they're confounded, so there's no way for me to partition it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I, I could be wrong a lot of the time. I just, you know, it's I just try to talk to you good, know, I'm guys impressed. like you, you. You, you, yeah, you teach me a lot of things too. So it's you know, I'm, 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 I'm no, learning listen. about. You know, I might know some physics stuff. I'm still, you know, I'm still not the greatest. I don't think I'm this, this really highly intelligent physics guy. I know all the equations in the world. I don't. Um, you know, I don't know all about bows. You know, um, well, so I believe say, there's also Sam. things. You only need to be smart enough to realize how ignorant you are, right? And as long as you're smart enough to realize how ignorant you are, you're always going to be learning, and that's all it takes. But um, you've you've taught me a lot. Uh, again, wonderful subject matter expert, applied physics to our sport and our community. And uh, Sam's a great guy. He's got some really cool products coming, but he's got some startup uh, 
He's got a supply and demand intersection that's going to be very abrasive toward him because he does have some cool mm-hmm. products coming. But um, really cool to have you on the show, and we'll have you again when we get into limbs. And this, we are at two hours and five minutes right now, and we've barely covered anything, and the limbs are actually more complicated. But this will be a great baseline yeah. for people because if we didn't go through these fundamental basics, limbs would not make as much sense. Yeah, well, so, you know, the, the riser, yeah, it's tough because, you know, um, you know the, the riser, you know, I have not spent as much time as I have um, when you're comparing the riser to the limbs and, and to the one piece bows. I mean, that, that was, that was a lot of hours, a lot of engineering, um, very well in tune with, with the, the bows, the limbs, the geometry, how they work. Um, you know, the, 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 the riser, um, you know, it, it got a lot of engineering too, but it just was not as much, um, time spent. And I think that's because composites are a lot more complicated when it comes to in engineering. I mean, you got fiber angles, all this stuff. I mean, aluminum is aluminum. All right, man. Thanks for coming on. Um, we're going to have a bunch of questions. Um, maybe we'll go live for live Q and A at some point. Uh, but you're a great source of information, and you and you openly share. There's not a lot of bowyers, especially in the metal world. To openly crack open the egg and go, here's my design, here's the math, have fun. And um, honestly, um, Sam is continuously improving so much that it doesn't. This is his riser today, and six months is riser. He, 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 there's already changes coming, so he's always improving and continuous improvement and iterative learning. And the scientific method is part of his day to day life. So I mean, he could give away this recipe all day long and. By the time somebody deploys it, he'll be three or four iterations down the road. But thanks for coming on, Sam. Thanks for arguing with me, even though I'll probably edit out our. That's what how most of our conversations go, and that's how you learn. And I learned a lot today. Appreciate it. Well, I, I argue. That's how that's how I do. I, like how I argue all, all right. the time. It's, I, I, I love to argue. That's one of my biggest things. And it's funny, you know, uh, my wife hears me argue with people, uh, especially with my dad or my brothers. We get loud. Okay, we, we're all loud guys with to start talking all over each other and stuff. I, I, I'm really impatient with you. So, yeah, I don't, I don't try to get too loud with you. But you know, if you hear, hear me, my, my, my family's argue. We argue all the time about everything, stupid stuff. I mean, it's just, and, it, and it's, and it's fun to me. And it's really, if I'm wrong, it's not a huge deal to me. I'm fine to be wrong. I'm wrong, wrong a lot. You know, it's, 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 it's not a big deal. When you, when you get butt hurt about being wrong. And and then what yeah. happens if you really do get a lot of butt hurt is that you hide your wrongs from people because you don't want to get you don't want them to know you're butt hurt and pissed off. So you know then, I'm wrong. Okay, well, great. Yeah. <laughs> right. So Let's I know, I'm, I, you know I'm wrong. I, if someone can like if you, you know it's hard to convince me. Also, I'm a, I'm a horrible person to convince. I mean, you got to show me a lot of stuff. You got to really be convinced yeah. to show me that I am wrong. But you know when when I really realize it. And uh, sometimes it's me just, you know, I got to go drive in my car and just think about it on the way home from work. I, I, I think about, I don't even listen to the radio on the way home from work. I just sit there and think about, oh shit, this guy argued with me earlier today. Well, who the hell was right? Let me think, let's drive and think about this. Engineers argue all, all, all the time. We're always tons of you, our arguing. Yeah. That's, you know? that's definitely how you learn. And, and being, being comfortable with being wrong is the key to, to self-discovery. But that's a whole nother, unfortunately, it's it's God's personality, right? I mean, he, <clears throat> self-actualization, you have to be intelligent to self-actualize and ignorant people are never aware. So um, when someone's kind enough to fight with me and make me aware that I'm ignorant, I need to stop and accept that and try to get it resolved and then move on. That's a lot better than covering uh-huh. it up because everyone knows you're covering it up anyway. But we've, we've created yeah. a culture of that. But uh, no, it was great to have you on and argue with you. Uh, I always learn a lot. And um, usually when we argue, I'm the one coming away learning that I was wrong. So I'm sure this will be the exception, though. I'm sure I've got you nailed down this time, but I'm glad you shared this with us. I really look forward to the response and uh, be ready for the limbs.